Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Forgive me the spirit to do this lesson. Yahweh being the name of the Heavenly Father, Bahashem, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, being the name of Yahweh's only begotten Son and our Lord and Savior, also who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, Bahashem Rakakwadash meaning in the name of the Holy Spirit, double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and Shalom to the hopeful elect, which are your so-called Blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, the true biblical Israelites, all right, and Shalom to you speckled birds, and you Israelite foreigners that are scattered out in the other nations that look like the other nations, but are in fact Israelites. And the title of this lesson is, Pray for More Laborers, all right? You know, and this lesson is based off a scripture that's written in Matthew chapter 29 or Salaki in Matthew chapter 9. All right. You know, I have it pulled up here on the screen, you know, where it talks about how, you know, uh, the harvest is truly plenteous, but the labors are few. All right. Labors, according to the scriptures, you know, ultimately means, you know, men, you know, that are, you know, willing to get out here and do the work and feed our people, you know, feed the flock, teach our people, so on and so forth. All right. So the scripture says, you know, the, the, the harvest is uh, plenteous, but the laborers are few, meaning there's not many men that's willing to get out here and do the work. All right. You know, so that should be one of the prayers that we should that we pray about, you know, when uh, we pray to Yahweh Bashem El Shad. All right. Pray to Yahweh Bashem El Shad that the Lord, that he uh, sends forth more men that's willing to get out here and do the work. All right. You know. Because you have a lot of men, you know, they talk about how they want to be a part of the 144,000, you know, this, that, and other, you know, but they're not willing to do, you know, the work, all right? You know, because ultimately, you know, according to the scriptures, the 144,000 are going to be the men that's out here teaching and feeding the flock, all right? You know, and, you know, seeing everything that's popping off, you know, all these end time prophecies, you know, uh, you know, we know the word has ultimately, you know, went out. It has reached the four corners of the earth to, uh, to a certain extent, you know, but there's still work that needs to be done because, you know, there's still a couple more prophecies that has to come to pass. All right. The mark of the beast, you know, uh, World War Three, all right, fully popping off and Yahweh shall return. It, all right. You know, so that lets us know that there is still work that needs to be done. So therefore, you know, we should, we should be praying to you. How about Shemel Shad that he sends forth more laborers to do this work, to feed our people, to get, get out there in the field, you know, and do this work. All right. So through the spirit, you know, this is going to be a fairly quick lesson, Lord willing, straight to the point. All right. And Lord willing, you know, it's edifying and exhorting to you brothers out there. All right. Because you're the ones that are the ones that are supposed to be doing this work. All right. So this is Matthew chapter nine. And, uh, Verse 35, and it says, And Yahweh Shah went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Verse 36, But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they fainted and were scattered abroad as sheep having no shepherd. All right, and that's that's exactly you know how our people are. When you look at them, all right, you know, we're scattered abroad all throughout the four corners of the earth, all right, and we fainted, all right, not, you know, literally, but spiritually, all right, you know, our people, you know, are, you know, uh, in the midst of all types of sins, all right, you know, don't know what's going on, don't know who they are, you know, think that they're African Americans, niggas, and all these other proverbs and bywords that was given to us, all right, you know, we fainted, all right, so, Verse um, 37, it says, Then said unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the laborers are few. All right. Let's read this in the NIV on the other side. It says, Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plenteous. It's lucky the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. All right. So that goes back to what I said earlier. You know, the, the, the laborers are ultimately you know, the men that's willing to do this work, all right, the work of Yahweh Shai, you know, teaching our people, feeding the flocks, so on and so forth, all right, 
there's not many men that are willing to do this work. All right. Verse 38. It says, pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. All right. So this is where, you know, I got the title of this lesson from pray for more laborers uh, because, you know, seeing that, you know, the laborers are few, you know, and there's still work that needs to be done in order for us to get the hell up out of here. All right. You know, we're supposed to be praying for more laborers. Right. You know, the scriptures tell us that this word, the gospel of the kingdom shall be spread throughout the earth then shall the end come right and this word is not going to go out by itself you know how about shimei was shy uses men to relay his message all right you know so we're supposed to be praying for more laborers more men that's willing to get out here in the field and do this work all right you know so let's jump to uh matthew chapter 24 because like i said you know this gospel has to be preached uh, in all the world as a witness to all nations all right and then the end shall come this is matthew chapter 24 in verse 14 and it says and the god and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come all right you know and a lot of christians they'll say see it says all nations well what you have to understand is that you know we are scattered in all nations, all right? The Israelites are scattered in all nations. So this is why this gospel has to be preached into all nations because we're pretty much everywhere, you know, on the earth, all right? You know, but the point being is that this gospel has to be preached in all the world in order for the end to come, all right? So again, this is why, you know, we should be praying for more laborers, all right? This is a prayer that you should not neglect, all right? You know, so let's jump to... Uh, Matthew, Shalaki, let's jump to Revelation chapter 7. And this is going to go into, uh, you know, the angels, you know, that's pretty, the four angels that's pretty much, you know, holding back the winds, you know, from destroying the earth, all right? And by wind, you know, it's ultimately talking about the destruction, all right? Wind, according to the scriptures, it can mean destruction. So, you know, you have angels that's literally, you know, holding back, you know, the, the destruction because, you know, uh, you know, the, the elect hasn't, you know, been sealed yet, all right? You know, this is why you haven't seen World War III fully go nuclear yet. Because once it goes nuclear, it's pretty much, that's the end game, all right? You know, America's going to be destroyed, so on and so forth, you know? But this is uh, Revelation chapter 7. We're going to start at verse 1. And it says, And after these, I saw, so like, and after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree all right so like i said you know you have angels that's literally holding back you know uh the destruction all right from destroying you know the earth all right verse two and it says and i saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living power and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea saying hurt not the earth neither the sea nor the trees till we have sealed the servants of our power and their foreheads all right so you know destruction is not going to come you know until you know the servants the, to the servants of the lord has been sealed all right the hundred and forty four thousand so on and so forth all right you know, and like like we stated earlier, we are all throughout the earth, right? Like like in Matthew chapter twenty four said, you know, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world as a witness to all nations, because we are in all nations, all right. That's part of the curses in Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight. It told us that the Lord He would scatter us into all nations, all right. Let me see if I could get that just for the edification purposes, all right. This is Deuteronomy chapter twenty eight, and um. Verse 64. Uh, yeah, all right, verse 64. It says, And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. All right, so that's why Matthew chapter 24 and uh, verse 14 said what it said. Let's go back to it.
It says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. All right. So this is not talking about literally all nations, all right, the heathens and all that. The Lord could give a damn about them folks. All right. You know, this nation, the, the, this, this gospel has to be preached into all nations, you know, because we are scattered into all nations like we just read about in Deuteronomy chapter 28. All right. You know, so that's why, you know, uh, it says what it says. Let's go back to uh, Revelation chapter seven. All right. And um, let's read verse three again. It says, saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our power and their foreheads. All right. So destruction is not going to come to the elect. You know, it's ultimately sealed. All right. Verse four. And it says, and I heard the number of them which were sealed and and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. All right. The 144,000 are only Israelites, right? Point blank, period. Only men that are Israelites, to be more specific. It says, of the tribe of Judah were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Asher were sealed 12,000. Of the tribe of Naphtali were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Manasseh were sealed 12,000. And of the tribe of Simeon, were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Levi were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Issachar were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Zebulon were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Joseph were sealed 12,000 of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed 12,000 after this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with robes and palms in their hands. All right. Now I want to uh, get some edification on this. You know, uh, people will read that scripture, right? And they'll think that it's talking about, you know, literally all nations of people, and it's not. So let's uh, see if I could get that right quick. Revelation chapter 7. <clears throat> and. verse uh Salakia. yeah verse nine all right let's see what this word um let's go to this word um nations right quick all right strong's g 1484 ethnos ethnos All right, so it says a multitude, whether of men or beasts, associated or living together, a company, troop, swarm, a multitude of individuals of the same nature or genus. All right, you know, so it says a multitude of individuals of the same nature. All right, not talking about multiple nations. All right, it says the human family, a tribe, a nation, people, group. It says that in the Old Testament, foreigners, foreign nations not worshiping the true god pagans gentiles all right and it's not talking about it's definitely not talking about the other nations all right it said paul's uses the term for gentile christians all right let's go back and let's look at this word kindreds all right and this is going to let you know that this is talking about israelites so uh the greek word for the word kindred is phile strong's g 5443 phule phule all right so this is going to let you know that, you know, Revelation chapter seven and verse nine, you know, it's ultimately talking about Israelites. All right. It's not talking about like all nations of people, like including like heathens and stuff like that. All right. So this is the definition for this word kindred in uh, Revelation chapter seven and verse nine. It says a tribe. It says in the New Testament, all the persons descending from one of the 12 sons of the patriarch Jacob. All right. So this is talking about the children of Israel, right? The 12 tribes of Israel, not all nations of people. So let's go back and um, read that again. It says, and after this, I beheld and lo, a great multitude, which no man can number of all nations and kindreds. All right. Like we just like we just established, this is talking about the Israelites and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the lamb clothed with white robes 
and palms in their hands, right? Because, you know, all so-called all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne because, like we established earlier, you know, all, we were scattered into all nations. So therefore, we're going to be speaking the languages of these other nations, so on and so forth. But at the end of the day, we're still Israelites, all right? You know, we were just scattered into all nations, you know? So I just want to bring that out for edification purposes, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people stumble across that, you know, and think that it's talking about all nations of people, you know? But getting back to the whole point of uh, me bringing this out, you know, there are literally angels, you know, that are holding back, you know, the destruction, you know, that's gonna be coming upon the earth, you know, because, you know, the elect, you know, hasn't been sealed yet, all right? You know? And in order for the end to come, all right, this gospel has to be preached through all out the earth, you know, and this gospel won't be preached throughout the earth without laborers, all right? So going back to the whole point of me even bringing this out, you know, we're, we're supposed to be praying for laborers, all right? Men that's willing to do this work, you know? So uh, let's get Hebrews chapter four, and I'm gonna end off with that, all right? Because our ultimate goal you know, so ultimately, uh, get the hell up out of here, you know, get to, get the kingdom of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? You know, so we could finally rest because the scriptures tell us in Micah chapter 2, you know, that this is not our rest. So this is Hebrews chapter 4, and uh, let's start at verse 9. And it says, There remained therefore a rest to the people of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? And the people of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is the Israelites. Verse uh, 10. It says, for he that is entered into his rest, he has also ceased from his own works as Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai did from his. All right. Now, verse 11 is the point. It says, let us labor, therefore, to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. All right. So we have to labor in order to enter into that rest. Right to get the kingdom out by Shemiah was shot for this place to be destroyed so we can get the hell up out of here, right? But yeah, you know, we have to labor in order to get into that rest, you know. So, going back to the whole point, you know, of this lesson, all right, you know, we're we should be praying to Yahweh by Shemiah was shot for more laborers because the harvest is truly plenteous, but the laborers are few. So, with that, you know, Lord willing. You know, this lesson was edifying and exhorting to you brothers out there. Because like I stated earlier, you are the ones that are supposed to be doing the work. And uh, as always, I want to give all praises, honor, and infinite glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. Double honor to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. And Shalom to you brothers that's out there pushing this truth and sincerity. Shalom.